Assalamu alaikum everyone, I hope you all are doing well. Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, a very warm welcome to you. Today we will be talking about gram stain. I do have a video on that but I thought I should update it. Before starting the lecture, I like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. Grab a pen and a notepad and let's get started. Gram staining actually is used for the basic classification of bacteria based on cell wall structure. It is a staining procedure that is used to divide bacteria into two groups. It is the most important procedure in microbiology. It was developed by Hans Christian Gram. Do you know who was he? He was a Danish bacteriologist or physician. Gram developed this technique in the morgue of a hospital in Berlin in 1884. Gram devised his technique to make bacteria more visible in stained sections of lung tissue. The final step to staining was the addition of safranin, which was done by a German Jewish pathologist called Weigert. Gram staining separates most important bacteria into two groups. Number one, the gram positive bacteria, which stains purple, we'll discuss how, and the gram negative, which stains pink or red, we'll discuss that how. As in this picture, you can visualize both the gram positive there, the purple one, and the gram negative, the pink one. Procedure The gram stain involves the following four steps. The crystal violet dye stains all cells purple. The iodine solution, a mordant. You now might be thinking, what is a mordant? It is a substance, typically an important organic oxide, that combines with a dye and thereby fixing it in a material. So, which material there? Definitely the bacteria. And um, so, the iodine solution is aided to form a crystal violet iodine complex. And you know what, guys? All cells continue to appear purple. And then, in the third step, the organic solvent, such as acetone or ethanol, extracts the purple dye complex from the lipid-rich, thin-walled gram-negative bacteria to a greater degree than from the lipid-poor, thick-walled gram-positive bacteria. The gram-negative organisms appear colorless, while the gram-positive bacteria remain purple. At the end, the red dye, safranin, that stains the decolorized gram-negative cells, pink or red. Here in this picture, you can see we've got both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Um, by adding a crystal violet dye, we'll get both of them in the dark blue color. They will be treated with iodine, both will get purple color. After using an organic solvent, we'll decolorize the gram-negative cause because of its thin wall but positive will not be decolorized and after decolorization it will aid a counter stain that is safranine to both um, but gram positive will still remain purple and the gram negative will take that color and will become pink or red in this picture the gram negative is pink okay and in this picture you can see the crystal water dye is put on this colorless gram positive and gram negative bacteria will get the purple color and we'll leave this dye for 60 seconds and we'll wash the slide and then we'll go for iodine we'll put that and we'll leave that for 60 seconds like for one minute and then we'll wash the slide and uh, then we'll put ethyl alcohol that is an organic solvent we'll leave that for five to ten seconds and we'll wash the slide we'll get the gram negative bacteria decolorized then on these decolorized gram negative bacteria and uh, the gram positive purple colored stain um we'll put the safranine dye and we'll get leave that for 45 seconds and we'll get the color on the gram negative bacteria and not on gram positive because it was still purple why do gram positive bacteria retain the dye and why do gram negative bacteria decolorize okay the answer to first question is that the gram positive bacteria have thick peptidoglycan layer in their cell wall they are lipid poor and thick walled bacteria. They've got single membrane. Uh, we will be visualizing their picture in a moment. Wait for it. And the answer to second question is that the gram negative bacteria have got thin peptidoglycan layer in their cell wall. They are lipid rich, thin walled bacteria. And the cell wall of gram negative bacteria is sandwiched between two membranes. Okay, now visualize them. We've got gram positive there and gram negative there. As we look at the gram-positive bacteria cell wall, it has got just this thick peptidoglycan layer. And if we look into it, it has got this one plasma membrane 
definitely will have the cytoplasm and the periplasmic space. If you want to know more about the structure of bacteria, I've got a video on bacteria structure in detail. Its link is in the description or maybe in the top right corner. And now look at the gram-negative bacteria. It has got a cytoplasm, periplasmic space, but it has got this thin peptidoglycan layer. It has got two membranes, the plasma membrane, this one, and the outer membrane, uses of gram staining. The gram stain is useful in two ways. Number one, in the identification of many bacteria. And number two, in influencing the choice of antibiotic because in general gram-positive bacteria are more susceptible to penicillin G than our gram-negative bacteria. As for everything, there are some positives and there are some negatives. There are some merits and there are some demerits. Same goes for gram staining as it has the benefit that it divides the bacteria into two major groups, the gram-positive and the gram-negative. But it also has some shortcomings like not all bacteria stain with this gram stain like for acid fast bacteria and others um, do not stain with it acid fast bacteria for example mycobacterium tuberculosis it has got too much lipid in its cell walls so dye cannot penetrate that's why it is acid fast stain and for other bacteria like rickettsia it stains with gymza or other tissue stains but it does not stain with the gram stain all right as a quick recap Gram staining is a basic classification of bacteria based on their cell wall structure. It is a staining procedure. It was developed by Hans Christian Gram. He was a Danish bacteriologist or physician, and he developed this technique in 1884 in a morgue of a hospital in Berlin. The gram stain divides bacteria into two main groups, the gram positive, which stains purple, and the gram negative, which stains pink or red. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. You've learned something. If you really did, give this video a big, big thumbs up. Comment down below in the comment section. And you can also connect with me on my socials. I've got my Instagram, I've got my Twitter, and I really upload blogs. So do check them out. Till next time, Assalamu Alaikum.